Uh, 900 people now at FedEx going to be laid off. And um, it's actually a shorter list than we've seen in other weeks, which uh, could uh, could be good news. But uh, nonetheless, FedEx has had other layoffs. This is just the latest the latest round of layoffs. And um, I've got to tell you that, um, you know, the uh, stock market has, um, it seems, stabilized. For those of you who don't follow the stock market because it's too depressing, maybe you lost too much money in the stock market uh, through your 401K or your IRA, your mutual funds, whatever. The stock market appears to have stabilized a bit. That doesn't mean it's going through the roof. It uh, also doesn't mean that uh, it's uh, continuing to drop triple digits every day, which for a while it seemed that was going to go on until we got down to zero. That seems to have stabilized. But uh, there was a list. Uh, I saw a list of companies likely to go out of business <laughs> in 2009. Did you see this? Companies likely to go out of business in 2009. And um, they named specific companies. And um, they're not just talking about layoffs. They're not just talking about, uh, you know, some cutbacks. They're talking about more companies going out of business in 2009. Now, without getting into the entire list, the names of companies that are thought to be going out of business in 2009 includes, and this was uh, just the opinion of uh, one particular website, Chrysler. Finally, after all the years of bailouts and TV commercials and what have you, Chrysler. Well, wait a minute now. All of a sudden, somebody's talking in the background. Chrysler, Sirius Satellite Radio. Remember, they were going to have the big merger, and that was going to solve their problems. Sirius still hasn't made a penny. Oh, another one that uh, is uh, cutting back jobs, another one that's laying off is Nissan. Nissan, not an American company, of course, but they do have American jobs. Nissan is going to lay off 20,000 people. But they won't all be here in the United States. Wow. But yes, uh, Chrysler and Sirius Satellite Radio are two companies predicted to be going out of business this year. Also, uh, uh, a uh, chain called Claire's Stores, which I, I don't really know that chain. Apparently, it's a women's clothing chain. was predicted to be going out of business. Bunch of them. And yeah, you see these lists all the time. Who's going to go out of business this year? It's like the Deadpool for businesses. And I guess that's a whole other game people could play. Maybe they play that on Wall Street. You know, we do the Deadpool of celebrities. Maybe down on Wall Street, they do the Deadpool of companies. We'll be dead by a year from now. But nonetheless, uh, we have tried to get you through this by giving you uh, advice on your money. Well, that's right, Dean. Thank you, Krispy Kreme. That's a company that I thought had already gone into business or had filed for bankruptcy because they fell off a cliff pretty fast after that big expansion. They seem to disappear. But um, what, I'm, what I'm talking to you about now is this. I, we have tried uh, to help you out because, uh, as you know, I have had uh, some good luck in my life uh, uh, as a result of hard work, as a result of taking big risks that the average person would not take. And um, I have also uh, been a self-educated investor. And I've had a relatively conservative investment portfolio over the years that has held me in good stead during these tough times. I'm a self-made multimillionaire. What I've tried to do is I have tried to help you guys during this hard economic time with real financial advice that does not involve taking crapshoots. It does not involve flipping houses. It does not involve investing in gold or silver. It involves getting your balance sheet in line, which is what everybody should be doing. Cutting. Cutting spending. Increasing your savings. Preparing for the emergencies ahead. And being ready for whatever might come our way. Folks, the party is over. It's over. The party of spending, the party of going to Starbucks and spending $50 a week on your Starbucks card... 
the party of having every new gadget the minute it comes out, the party of having 23 flat screen TVs in your house, the party of having your, your car upgraded every year or two, the, the party's over, clearly. You need to have cash on hand. You need to have cash available to you for emergencies, for unemployment. What happens? This has happened to many people. Have you ever heard of this? Your landlord is a, not a big company. Your landlord owns a six-unit uh, apartment complex, and uh, he's just an individual, okay? Just, just an individual. And you're paying rent to this individual. You're one of the six people renting apartments from this guy. And suddenly he gets foreclosed upon. You didn't do anything wrong. You paid your rent. And suddenly you find yourself with an eviction notice. These are the kinds of things that are happening that you can't predict. And you need to be ready. And the ways you need to be ready are to keep your debt down to a minimum. Zero if possible. Do not rent money. If you owe money, do not owe it on a credit card. Credit card should be at a zero balance. Zero. And we used to recommend a six-month emergency fund for you in case of emergencies. The FU fund now must be 12 months of expenses. 12 months. That means you have to sit down and either do it with a pencil and a piece of paper or I would prefer you do it with a uh, software program like Quicken. Figure out what your actual monthly expenses are. And trust me, they're two to three times what you think they are. Figure out what your monthly expenses are. Multiply that number by 12. You need that money in the bank as a liquid asset in an FDIC insured account in case you need it. You need to be prepared to be out of work for a year or more. No more living on the edge, folks. You can't do it. You cannot do it right now. I never recommend that you do. I always recommend you be prepared for emergencies because you never know another 9-11 is going to happen or something crazy. You don't know. You need to be prepared. And Americans don't like saving, don't like planning. They don't like layaway. We want what we want now. You can't afford to be a now person. You can't. So what I try to do when we do these hours of the program is I try to educate you on how to keep your powder dry, how to be prepared for emergencies, how to avoid rolling the dice and treating life like a casino. The reason I'm where I am now financially, I mean, come on, Ed McMahon went bankrupt, okay? So just because somebody is on the air doesn't mean that they have been smart with their money. It doesn't. Okay. The reason I am in good condition today and not begging for bailouts, not uh, doing commercials with MC Hammer on the Super Bowl is because I have always lived beneath my means. Always. And I know Americans hate to do this. This is what you need to do. Fortunately for you, there's nothing embarrassing about this since it's what everyone needs to do. And I think saving money right now is a lot cooler than spending and looking like a fool. I watched the Grammy Awards and saw the outfits people were wearing and stuff, and it all looks so dated at this point. People spending $10,000 on an outfit they're going to wear one time. What planet do these people live on? You know, the vast majority of those people on the Grammy Awards are going to be MC Hammer one day. They're going to be. They can't see it, but it's true. And that means you, uh, Neo, or any of you guys, you're all going to be in the same boat with very few exceptions. Those of you who are popular today, most of you will not be popular in five years. You won't. You won't. I'm just letting you know. You need to be saving and planning and doing all that boring stuff that uh, your parents probably tried to tell you to do. And you paid no attention to them. And now look where it got you. So if you've got questions about your personal finances, remember, I'm not a certified financial planner. I'm not an accountant. I'm not a stockbroker. 
I don't have college credentials. I learned about money by being conservative, reading books, reading the Wall Street Journal, Forbes, Barron's, all the business publications. I am self-taught. I am a self-taught multimillionaire. And I am here to share what I know with you. So if you've got questions about your personal finances, now is your time to call in and ask. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-8666. The Tom Likas Show. Oh, yeah. The Tom Likas Show. Now with shorter commercial breaks. Fewer commercials and the most phone calls we've ever taken. Oh, yeah. Even you, you boob, you could dial in here and get in at 1 800 5800 Tom. It's 1 800 5800 866. Let's say hello to Andrew on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, how are you? Doing okay. Well, I just wanted to give you a call. I've been listening to you since I was uh, 19 years old. I'm 24 now. I had a uh, serious girlfriend at the time. Uh, it was just about a year. I was a psychology major at a uh, fine liberal arts institution out here in Southern California. And uh, Which meant that you, wait, wait, let me guess, that meant you didn't know what you wanted to be when you grew up. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, So you so wasted started... your college education studying something you really had no interest in. Well, I eventually uh, switched, I think, somewhat thanks to you, to mathematical economics and just monitored in psychology. All right. And uh, I started a company in college, didn't really uh, take off, although maybe it will down the road, but I taught the SATs for a little while, and then I was looking at my life and thinking, you know, what should I possibly get into that's going to make me the kind of money that I want to make by the time I'm you know, 30 or 35? And I uh, was interested in commercial real estate, interested in finance, or being a stockbroker, a financial planner. Um, but eventually I would get more of a kick out of being a commercial real estate broker. And uh, in order to do that, I had to support myself, you know, for the first 12 to 18 months. Uh, I'd take a big risk and invest in myself. Um, and now, you know, I have about 40 grand in credit card debt. Wait a minute. Uh, Stop right that, there. Stop okay. right there. Why do you have 40 grand in credit card debt? Because a man's got to live uh, while uh, putting himself uh, through training. I mean, why I didn't you work firm. at another job for a year and put some money away? Uh, you know, I was impatient and uh, self-confident, and you know, stupid, been, uh, stupid. Other... Well, I mean, now I have uh, some deals in escrow. Once the escrow is closed, you know, fingers crossed, knock on wood, I'll have uh, fifty grand coming in from those two deals alone. Well, if I were you, I'd take that and apply it directly to the credit card to retire that debt immediately. Oh, I can't wait, Tom. Believe me. I have uh, most of my debt at 0%. Um, because no, you don't. Uh, no, you don't. You had 0% so you for six transfer, months. Exactly. And uh, those, most of that's going to be over in May. So, I, I, you know, I took a big risk, but it looks like I'm going to come out alive, you know. And... Uh, I thought this, you don't want to just talk to you. I thought this would be a good excuse. You know, I haven't had a serious girlfriend since I was 19. Good. I, uh, you know, get laid regularly. I could use more advice maintaining a bullpen. Um, I'm okay. Oh, we'll do that. Stand. We'll do that on 101. But right now we're talking about money. Yeah, yeah. So what is your question? Uh, my question, I suppose, is do you approve of uh, what I've done? No, I don't approve of forty thousand dollars in credit card debt is insanity. I, insanity. You know, I, <laughs> because you were not paying zero percent when you borrowed that money. You were paying eighteen to twenty four percent, weren't you? Uh, well, then you could, well, I've, I've done several things to uh, build up my from the time I was eighteen to the time I was twenty three. Paid it down a couple times when I was working, um, and uh, then you can do various things like transferring a balance, paying a one-time fee of 3% and having that balance transfer fixed at 0% for 12 months. Uh, you can give yourself cash advances at 7%. Uh, 
uh, where you write yourself like a courtesy check. It's not exactly a cash advance, but that's where they don't they also charge a fee. Act. Don't they also charge a fee every time you do that? Uh, that's about a one and a half percent fee. So I mean, you know, it, it costs money to borrow money. Um, but if you do it right, you can do it with credit cards. Yeah, but uh, the, the way the way the world does it uh, when they're doing it right is uh, they take they take a loan from the bank. You know, you know I, uh, I sometimes wish I had done that. Um, you know, the revolving credit line build it up a little bit at a time. As sort of this is the most expensive. The only way that's more expensive to borrow money uh -huh. is is to get uh, an advance refund. Uh, from one of those uh, tax preparation agencies, uh, or a payday loan. I mean, th th this is one of those expensive ways to borrow money. Do you suppose if I had gone into a bank and asked for a fifty thousand dollar personal loan or small business loan to become an independent contractor, they would have gone for it? I don't know. Do you have anything that you could use as collateral? Not really, other than myself and my expensive college education. <laughs> well, then what you should have done is worked for a year and put the money away. Well, then I'd be a year behind. A year behind what? Where I am now. But the point is, you didn't... <laughs> the, the point is that you're behind in other ways because that credit card debt is going to come due. And by the way, just because you've got stuff in escrow, as anyone who's seen the signs that said in escrow and then for sale again, uh, especially in economic times like these, something in escrow doesn't mean anything. Uh, that's, uh, that's certainly some truth to that. Um, absolutely. I mean. And so if you don't get that, if you don't get the 50 G's that you're planning on getting, you're uh, going to be paying how much? 12, 14, 16% a year on that credit card debt? Yeah, I mean, there's always more deals, uh, moving forward. Um, but do you know what you're doing to your credit rating? Let's talk about your FICO score for a second. My credit rating went from 760. To 680 in the last year. All right, is it? It's going to continue going in that direction. I know until I can, you know, zero those balances. I can't wait. It's not just zeroing the balances. Every time you move, you, you transfer a balance from bank to bank to bank. They know what you're up to. They know, and yeah, you pay for it. Yeah. I, mean, I do. I do not recommend continuing to play these games. You know, it's one thing when you have an unexpected brain tumor or you get hit by a bus. Right. I'll buy it. That didn't happen to you. No, I just uh, didn't want to work, uh, you know, at a 40 or 45 grand job for a year. I wouldn't be able to put away enough to survive for a year. I mean, you know, there's some... There's some then you do it for two years. No then you do it for two it. years. I mean, pal, I got to right. tell you something. I, I worked at plenty of jobs that paid crap uh -huh. as I worked my way up. What I didn't do is run my credit card debt up above four thousand dollars. That's as high as I went. Yeah. And well, you think I didn't a... have expenses moving from city to city? <laughs> I know. No help from my parents. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was on my own, and I don't think you needed forty k in expenses either. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I probably. Uh... You know, sometimes I was hurting myself for the hard work I was doing with expensive crap, which was probably not Right, good. now the truth is coming out. The expensive <laughs> crap you've been buying. Yeah, yeah. You did this to yourself, and you didn't yeah. have to do it, but you did it. You were not willing to sacrifice, and that's why you're in the crapper now. Well, I don't feel like I'm in the crapper, but, uh, you know. Well, you're $40,000 in debt. What's your uh -huh. current income? Forget the two things that are supposedly in escrow. What is your current <laughs> income? I work a commission-only job, Bob. Commission-only. So your income is zero. 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 And where do you live, per, uh, per chance? <laughs> I live in a, uh, about a half a block from the beach. Oh, a half a block from the beach. Well, I'm sure that's $200 a month, right? <laughs> Something like that, Bob. Yeah, well, maybe more like... Uh, at twenty seven hundred dollars a month. No, no, it's a small studio. I'm uh, not extravagant. How much? Ten ninety five. Ten ninety five a month. Uh huh. Uh huh. I see. And you can afford ten ninety five a month in rent with no income. Uh, 
I can for about another four or five months, I figure. No, you can't because you're already at zero and, and you're in the negative numbers. <laughs> Where, what are your roommates' names? Uh, no, no, I live by myself in my studio. Uh, <laughs> you can afford to do that, huh? Well, I mean, I can afford to if I pull this off, you know? Yeah, but what if you don't? I'm not the kind of guy who sort of... You see, you have turned things. life, you have turned life into, into Caesar's palace. You yeah, are rolling the dice, right. you're, you're living close to the edge. I know. You played it like it's a progressive jackpot. That's kind of how I roll, Tom. I'm a pilot. Yeah, well, I'm you're gonna a... roll, you're gonna roll, you're gonna roll right into bankruptcy, pal. You're, you're, you're you got all, you've got all the symptoms. I know. It was bankrupt or, uh, go big, you know? I'm, yeah, uh, well... I'm planning on going big and I'm sort of on track to do so. Oh, oh, you think so? I'll give you a call in another three months, but can you uh, take me out with a bong hit? Oh, I'll take you out with something. Here you go. Thank you, Tom. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Now heard six days a week, 3 to 8 p.m. As you head home, Monday through Friday, Saturdays 2 to 6 p.m. on 97.1 FM Talk and at BlowMeUpTom.com. All right, uh, when you need us most, here we are trying to help you out with your money at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Irving on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Great. Hey, good to uh, talk to you. Um, I was listening to your advice about, you know, saving money, having the zero debt, having the 12 months of the FU fund. Um, you know, that all sounds great, but here's my, my dilemma and the problem is, isn't that the exact opposite of what they want us to do to stimulate the economy? Aren't we yes. supposed to go out there and shop and buy stuff and it's go to the, the movies? It's the opposite. Yes. So, it's, it's the opposite. So is there a balance? How can we strike? Like, what, how can I help? You don't have to strike a balance. You have to do what's good for you first. Okay. Well, if everybody does that, then we'll never gonna we're never. Everybody's gonna be not going to do it. Most morons are going to keep spending, but not you. Okay, okay. Because yeah, this weekend I was uh, shot with a little dilemma, like buying some crazy, you know, more stuff. No. Like, should I save? Or should I help the economy? I'm trying to justify it, you know. Cut like, back. <laughs> cut, cut back, back on everything. Okay. By the way, big companies are cutting back. They're not spending. They're laying people off and cutting back on capital expenditures. Why shouldn't right. you do that? Okay, so you think that even if all of us who are listening to you do exactly and save, there's still going to be enough people spending to, to help? Well, put it this way. They'll be the stupid ones padding okay. your bank account. Okay. All right, awesome. Well, that's one of the hear what's your thoughts about that. And uh, if you can take me out African tribal style, please. I certainly can, Irving. Rick on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much, Rick. Um, right now. I'm in like a, I'm in debt. I'm about 3000 in debt, and I was trying to figure out a way how to pay it off quickly. Get a second job. Second job? Yes. How many credit cards do you owe? Just one. Okay. Get a second job. Okay. Moonlight. Work weekends. Okay. But before, before I was even like, before I even came out here, my credit score was like 750. But then when I came out here, like everything like went down. Well, chances are you change banks. Yeah, I did. Exactly. Okay. And when you change banks, you probably changed your Visa or MasterCard. Ah. Uh -huh. And whatever cards you had before had been established for a few years, and you got credit for that before, and now when you have new credit cards, so you'll huh. lose points for that. Okay. Uh, probably you'll lose points for other things that happen when you move as well. Uh, applying for credit, applying for new credit card, uh, applying for credit when you rented your apartment. Okay. All of these things will take some points off your credit for the time being. Would you would you suggest like cutting off internet and cable and all that just to pay it off quicker too? 
I would suggest I would suggest to everybody that they batten down the hatches and cut anything they think they can afford to give up so they can be debt free. Yeah. You want to be debt free. Right. Because right now you're paying to rent that money. Okay. Do you know what the interest rate is on your credit card uh, for for credit card debt? No, I don't know. Well, that's one thing you need to educate yourself about that. You need to know how much you're paying. Okay. You can be paying anywhere from 7 to 25% on that credit card. Okay. But whatever it is, let's say it's the average of 18%. 18%, you're paying $540 a year in simple interest. Just keep that $3,000 in credit. Right. Is it worth it? No, it's not worth it. No, it's not. But should uh, I, should I, so after I take care of that, then I can save? Oh, yes, but the debt comes first because even when you're saving money, right. your average bank account right now is paying less than 1% interest. Okay. So that means any debt you have where you are paying more than 1%, uh -huh. uh, you need to pay that first. All right. Cool, cool. I, I, yeah, I just wanted to. It's not. I want to tell you. I know it's not very sexy, and I know it's not what people want to hear. Right. But I'm telling you, it is the key to survival. Okay. All right. Thanks, Tom. Can you take me out, Kobe style? Absolutely, Rick. Right. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Hamilton on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Uh, hi, Tom. I'm a little nervous, but I appreciate all the v advice you're giving us about the sure. finances. And uh, I think I have a pretty simple question. It's about the emergency money fund. Yeah. Which the I FU think fund, is a, yes. Huh? The FU fund, yes. Yeah, which I think is a very good idea to have that. And I want to even have a little more than 12 months. But my question for you is, uh, the bank, you know, pays no interest, and it could be, you know, you need at least like 4000 a month, so it could be like, you know, quite a bit of money. Do we just put it in the bank with hardly any interest? or is there Right any now, yes. Yes, because there's no safe places to keep your money. But the FDIC will insure up to $250,000. The important thing right now is preservation of capital. Okay, so we don't even want to, like, put it in a money market fund at Schwab or anything? No, do you know why? Because money market funds right now, uh, Vanguard, where I have money, is paying 0.33%. Not 3.3%, 0.33%. Oh, yeah. And that's now, what the... I, I, I would rather sleep well at night than to put my money in for 0.33% interest. Uh huh. And so, since the the banks are all FDIC, you don't recommend that it matters which one we put it in, worrying about which one is safer or that no. type. No. Well, I mean, put it this way: the ones that list in the newspaper as having the highest interest rates are usually the next to go. So we don't even want to go for the highest interest rate that way. Well, look at uh, what's happened to even banks that we thought were solid as a rock. Citibank, Bank of America, Washington Mutual. Uh, they've all been in the tank. Uh, yeah, it almost seems like you got to worry, like if you're worried about which bank is going to go next, you'd be switching your money every other week to a different bank. Well, you might be, but if you're FDIC insured, you don't have to worry about that. Okay. Uh, I think you've answered my question, and uh, again, I appreciate all your advice. Remember also, when you're at a bank, make sure whatever account you're in is FDIC insured. Because banks love to say, why don't you try our money market account, and they don't bother to tell you that a money market account is not FDIC insured. Okay, so we should have that in writing on, on the account? or Well, it should certainly say that uh, uh, somewhere where you can see it. Okay. Make them tell you it's FDIC insured. Okay, absolutely. All right. Okay. Good luck. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes Diane on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Um, I have a question. I'm 22 years old, and I have debt 
and it's close to twenty thousand dollars. Now, what uh, exactly? I need to know this. It's cool. You're twenty two. Yeah. What did you run up twenty thousand dollars in debt for? Okay. Um, for my school, I'm going into nursing. I started off with LVN, lower level nurse, and now I'm becoming a nurse. And my school ended up to be around, I would say, maybe seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars just for my school. And so, you borrowed that from credit cards. Yes. Why didn't you get a loan? Um, I wasn't thinking of a loan because I was thinking uh, the APR would have been higher on the loan than it would on the credit cards, which the APRs are low right now. But then, yeah, I am paying for cash advances and all the fees and everything right now. Right. And how much is the uh, APR on that uh, money once you get past the teaser rates and all that? Um, the APR on, I have two cards. The APR right now is at 3.99. How much? 3.99. That's a teaser rate. And one, there's one that's a zero percent, which I, I know that... Uh, These are teaser rates. When the teaser rate ends, what are the real rates? Yeah, which is sometimes it goes uh, up to a default rate, which I've, I already know that. That's like at... What is it, 36 percent? 24 to 36. There we go. Now, darling, uh, no student loan is 24 to 36 percent. Yeah, and I was working which you know, how economy is, and I lost my job, so... Is there, would you know by any chance if there's a, like some type of program or something since I am jobless right now and I do have experience, but, you know, everything is at a freeze and how I can... Wait, wait I still don't understand, we'll get to that. I still don't understand why you didn't get a student loan. Um, parents just said, you know what, it's better off to get it at the credit card. We might pay for it later, but it never happened like that, so... But what could they could pay your student loan off if you get out, if you'd gotten a student loan you could just pay it early. Yeah, and what can I do now? I'm, I know I can't get a student loan right now. Yeah, but the thing is, I, what I'm trying to point out to you, you never gave this any thought, did you? Well, I, w I thought about it, but I just you know at the student loan rate, it was um, they told me that they'll give me like close to ten percent, and I was looking at the APRs and. Well, I, you were I, looking I, at teaser rates, darling. You didn't know enough about credit. You were looking at the rates you get for the first six months or the first year. Yeah, that's true. But you are not going to owe that money for a year. You're going to owe that money for five, six, seven, ten years. Yeah, which is, I know I can't pay more than like four or five hundred dollars or close to a thousand dollars on credit cards every month. So, because I am still a student, so. I just yeah, but so, but the, did you really think you were only going to owe this money for a year? That's what I thought. You really believe that? Well, I don't believe it now. But, All right, so so you didn't know what you were doing, and you did something stupid. Yep, that's true. And your parents uh, reneged on a promise. Mm -hmm. Right. All yeah. right, you want to know if this program's for what now? No, I wanted to see as for is there anything like let's say for like a like I'm a student right full time. I did. I was working like uh, two weeks ago, but you know how economy is; they're laying everybody off, even though you have experience. Um, is there anything that I can go down on my debt or it's going to uh, mess up my credit score? It's going to mess because up my your credit what? score is high right now. Yeah, it's, it's going to mess up your credit score. Of course it is. If you had turned out to be a deadbeat and don't pay your entire balance, uh, yes, they're going to take points off your FICO score, no doubt. It'll go if I'm like seven forty, seven fifty right now. It'll go down to low six six hundred. I don't. Yeah. You know those formulas are kept a mystery, and they don't tell us really how they work. Mm -hmm. You might sign up for something like myfico.com, where you have to pay, mm -hmm. and uh, it will educate you about FICO scores. Oh, okay. And you will get all three of your credit scores there, and you have to pay a fee for it. It's just the one that I happen to use. There's plenty of services like that out there. I don't think any one of them is that much better than any other. Oh, okay. Uh, but you should look at that and learn how many points you're going to lose. Oh, God. Now, here's the part that you haven't told us yet, and here we are uh, a little bit into the call. Uh -huh. uh, you, you told Dean something that you didn't tell me. Why don't you tell all of us? Uh, yeah, I made a mistake when I was kind of uh, young. You, mean you made another mistake. 20. Wait, wait, wait. You made another mistake. Uh, yeah, I think that was the biggest mistake of my life. I mean, so the other mistake was not the biggest. You haven't told us about the biggest one yet. Um, yeah, I was with somebody, and I leased a car under my name for somebody else. 
Beautiful. What do I tell you about doing that? What do I say about that on this program? Don't ever do it. Right, but you thought you knew more than me, right? Yeah, which now I don't know what to do. I can't take the lease back. They told me that I won't be able to buy a car or anything for the next seven years, close to seven years or more, and I don't know what to do. So. Well, how much time is left on your lease? Um, Until May of 2010. So May of 2010, so you get another 15 months or so to go. Well, uh, you, did you ask them if they have a buyout clause? Can you can you pay the next four months up front and uh, and give the car back, for example? Uh, yeah, but this is this is an alternative car. What do you mean it's an alternative car? Um, I have an uh two. Basically, this is a second car, so I don't even drive it. More like it. That's not my and point. I, yeah, but to go Darling, buy you're out, trying to get out of a contract. A trading, I can do that, yeah, but if I trade it in, I'm going to have to get, go get another car. That's not what I said. I'm asking if there's a way you can turn the car in and pay several months' payments in exchange oh. for them letting you out of the uh, arrangement. Yeah, that, uh, they told me that it's going to be a, a great amount of upside down, so it's better off there telling me to keep the car even, even Who if told I have you to that? trade it. Who um, told you the that? dealer. The deal, the a couple dealer. dealers that I uh, took it into, uh, which is the car is a Mercedes. And they Why don't you go back to the dealer you leased it from? The deal, Not the dealer I leased it from. The dealer, a couple of uh, other Mercedes. Why don't dealers. you go back to the dealer you leased it from? I spoke with the person that sold me the car. He said the same thing. If I am to turn in the car, the value of it, uh, I have a great amount of upside down, so it's better off to just keep the lease. Or... Uh, um, besides taking it in oh. or trading it in. I'd run that by an attorney. You think I should get an attorney? And show them the contract you signed. Uh-huh. By the way, leasing cars, unless you own a company and you can write them off, I would never lease a car, ever. Yeah. Not for someone else and not for me. Live within your means, dear. I know. You've got nothing. Do you understand you have zero? Yeah, I know that. You have zero. And what no business was it of yours to be leasing Mercedes Benzes? Excuse me, I didn't understand what you said. What what business how did you have any business driving or leasing for someone else a Mercedes Benz? It was for somebody that I w I thought I was gonna Get so what? I don't care. I don't care if you married them. You have you have no right to drive a Mercedes Benz. You don't. I don't even drive. <laughs> uh, you, you have no right to be giving someone else a car to drive. You have nothing. Nothing. You hear me? Yeah, I hear you. People with nothing should not be leasing buying or borrowing anybody's Mercedes Benz. Tom. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. It's Darren on the Tom Likas Show. We're talking about your money here. Hello. Hello. How's it going, Tom? Great. Great. Hey, I, I had a question for you. There is a $5,000 uh, tax credit that was signed in last year by Bush uh, for first-time homebuyers. And I was wondering what you think about that. Um I don't have, uh, I'm 29 and I'm married and we don't have any debt besides a car loan. And, uh, we've bought our first home, put 20% down, we saved, put 20% down, and, uh, I'm just wondering what you think about the $5,000 tax, tax credit. Is it, I heard it's really not a tax credit, it's more like a, like a loan. Um, I've heard that it is a credit, but by the same token, uh, you know, it's it's a piddling uh, amount compared to what it's going to cost to own a home, and that's sure. what you have to remember. Sure. Do you have Do you have the cash to own a home? Do, do I do I have cash enough cash to own a home? Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. yeah and I, you I, operate I, I, that. I have the 12-month FU fund sitting right in my bank account. Um, I, I'd, I'd be fine. I've, I've been very smart with my money um, compared to most of your callers that have been calling in. Uh, and been No done. debts? What's that? No debts? No, no debts. No debts besides uh, my wife has a car loan. Okay. That's it. And, and uh, you're talking about buying a home that you plan to live in for a minimum of five to ten years. Right. We, we actually already bought the home in June, but it's, it's anyone who's bought a home in, you know, 2008 that uh, you can apply for this tax credit. But, yeah. But from what I understand, it's not, a, it's not really a tax credit. It's actually an interest-free loan. Now, I, I, haven't, I haven't done as much research well, I'll tell you it, what, I, yeah, I, if I were you, I would call and ask that question of the authorities uh, who are offering uh, that credit. Uh, but by the way, if you can get interest free, an interest-free loan, I'd take that as well, if only just to uh, get you up and running. I would take it and then pay it back. Our email address is tom at blowmeuptom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.